Interesting. Welcome to Deke's Dow Governance Discussion, February 23rd. Um, welcome back from East Denver. There's some hoarse voices, some people recovering from colds, uh, a lot of people uh, past travel, um, and some people having very, very good night sleeps um, in their in their bed. Uh, but anyway, on to the governance business of DxDAO, starting with the proposal roundup. We have two of my favorite proposals, um, two of my favorite types of proposals, um, which are the uh, carrot, which are ETH ENS proposals. So we have two big releases, uh, update carrot.eth uh, resolver to point to alpha five release of carrot. Um, so I think, yeah, this is the, this is the fifth proposal that's updated carrot. Um, lots of cool front ends. I think we can actually go to it here if we wanted to, there's a way to, yeah. Um, yeah, and so uh, I think Federico had this in there. Uh, this is also believed actually uh, interesting enough, I believe it's voted in by Sky, but he voted in only at one percent rep, even though he has uh, more than that uh, there. But yeah, this is an exciting update there, and uh, lots more to come on the carrot front. Had a lot of fun conversations with people in Denver uh, about carrot there, uh, and then we also have another big release uh, for Swapper.eth uh, content hash uh, to Swapper uh, v 1.0. This is a another awesome release. I think uh, uh, it just. Uh, release was, I think it was 10 days ago. Um, and the most exciting thing about this one actually is that it features a new uh, website, uh, or sorry, new landing page um, there, which we can check out if this all works here. And I don't know if, um, actually, I think he's not on the call right now, but maybe Adam, if there's any kind of thoughts on this release um, here for Swapper. Keenan's very excited to share the landing page, but he can't. Um, can't voice it or, or find words to, to convey. But uh, yeah, here's the swapper kind of new landing page. And, you know, a pretty cool idea, of course, that we've been talking about a lot of is putting this swap box directly on the landing page, right? So a lot of most Web3 apps, you have these two separate areas, but with swapper here, um, you just have everything kind of right in here. Um, and then it'll just scroll down and it'll be like the cool uh, landing page here. And this is a pretty, I think this all looks pretty dope here eco-routing, vote farming. Yeah, so not, not only like, yeah, it's, it's on the same page and like, whereas the typical pattern is a different subdomain, like different app. So right. it's, it's kind of combining those and, and also on the same page, right? So another pattern I could imagine is maybe like, you know, they're in the same app, but different taps, but this is also very interesting, right? Like it's, it's right there. You don't have to open a new app but new people can just kind of see what's going on. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, the scroll, right? The scroll is so powerful. And again, I don't feel like people use the scroll as much when you're dealing with like web three apps, but you know, you still can shift to different areas. You have tabs up here. And also this is some big updates on the UI, but I think that was all in the last um, update here. Um, but you can see some, some cool things. Uh, yeah. Here. And then of course it, it has, because it's had, yeah, Gnosis Chain support already. Um, we're switching to the Gnosis Chain. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool. And then the carrot update we can see here. Um, yeah, um, we've got the campaigns that we had uh, going on in terms of the Swapper campaign that was last, last, last Thursday. So there's, I think there was uh, a couple different ones uh, for a couple different pairs. One, uh, yeah, that were, incentivizing overall TVL for Swapper. Um, and so the, that uh, were launched, uh, yeah, I said last Thursday. So if you have those uh, carrots, I guess I actually think I'm earning these carrots, but I haven't claimed them like Candy Fork, so they probably haven't shown up in this. But presumably when you would claim your carrots from, uh, from Swapper.eth, um, these right here, um, they would be able to show up in, in this area here. Um, also exciting, they have these two other, I guess, partner ones. Um, Atlantis World is the DX Ventures investment team and part of the investment was a carrot campaign. So you can kind of keep track of the, the carrot campaign there. Uh, I think these will, a couple months from now um, until they expire. And then Hopper, which is a, a cool uh, 
uh, project also on, on uh, Gnosis chain there. Uh, so yeah, exciting developments like Carrot and Swapper.eth. Um, also on the uh, mainnet, the last thing I guess on mainnet is the buyback extension proposal, which just passed about 40 minutes ago. So it was actually on the agenda when I wrote it this morning, but um, is, was just executed and relayed. Dave and I were doing this for this. And then we're now wrapping the WEF over um, to then be deposited in a GP relay or it's 345 WEF. So that will continue that. Um, we just need to make sure we get in there before there's a buyback order, I think in, in about four or five hours that we'll go through there. Cool. And any other thoughts on mainnet? proposals, the carrot swap or the buyback extension. Cool. Um, heading over to uh, Gnosis Chain, there are four uh, buybacks uh, orders going on right now, 138, 139, 40 and 41, as I said, I think it's going to be passing in the next um, four hours. Uh, yeah, there, there has been some interesting chatter um, uh, there just to jump around a little bit in terms of the proposal order there is a, uh, a a member balancer uh payment from connor for a uh uh, uh for depositing into the uh gp relayer so uh, so the goal is to keep the buybacks running right as 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 quickly as possible um sometimes the amounts in terms of uh, getting are, are slightly off and so here we were awaiting funds for the buyback and we were uh the re relay was actually i think 0.3 west short um so connor um went ahead and uh sent a not this one uh sent the west to the relayer and then uh did a uh did a member balancer to do it himself let's see sorry we'll find it this one which I thought was cool and he said in the in the uh, discord chat um, that it was pretty easy to do um, so I think this is kind of a, a fun governance thing to keep the keep things going um, so that, that's the the member balancer one there um, yeah and then elsewhere on XDI we had Ross and Venki's uh, worker proposal um, and then there is a uh, trade uh 50K WX tied to USDC. Um, so a lot of contractors uh, end up using USDC. We use uh, primarily X dive when we're bridging over. So this would be a trade to increase the, the, the to transfer 50K from WX dive to USDC there. Uh, we had previously done this one before, uh, about six weeks before, as something that Dave had, had uh, worked on. Um, so that's another proposal up in the multi call. Um, and then the ones I think that might be interesting to discuss are, yeah, the, DXD entity formation and contributor um, stipend, which we've chatted about a little bit on this call. Um, but uh, Melanie, do you want to? Yeah, yeah. Um, so this proposal outlines a contributor stipend towards individual legal entity formation up to five thousand US dollars. In addition, this stipend covers up to five hundred dollars for annual maintenance of our contributors' um, legal entities. Because DXDAO is fully on chain and has no legal entity, um, our contributors are you know, exposed potentially to various legal regulatory risks. So um, as a result, we've encouraged some of our contributors to form, legal, um, form individual legal entities just to help um, ensure they remain covered for any, from any of those risks. Um, this proposal is quite an important one for our contributors, um, as, as we discussed a few weeks ago. Um, there are a few additions to this on-chain proposal that wasn't in the original form post as well. Uh, I did add additional verbiage to clarify the retroactive and effective date details. Um, I added, it says that um, if this proposal passes, it will go into effect immediately for all DXDAO contributors. Uh, in addition, this stipend will be retroactive for all contributors who already set up legal entities dating back to July 14th, 
2019. Um, so those are just a few additional details for the proposal. And then um, you can see it on chain on Gnosis chain as well. Yeah. Awesome. Any questions? Applause. Questions, comments, applause. Um, yeah, I think this is, I don't know. I've been thinking a lot about decentralization in the last week or two, talking to a lot of people in Denver. And I think the idea of having multiple stakeholders in a DAO is really important. Uh, and I think that's something that's really unique about DeepStow. We have these different people, these different, you know, uh, who are all kind of working together, um, but are all, um, you know, have an independence to them that can actually make DeepStow stronger uh, in the long term and, and kind of uh, building the ecosystem of that. And so I think this is a, is a very good step forward in that direction. Cool. And I think that is, yeah. So there's also, uh, uh, I didn't mention it, but uh, Federico's um, die payout, uh, also a uh, proposal there. Um, and then just also on XDI, it is not a proposal, but just a brief update. Um, for those of you who remember, we had a unpool swapper deposit order um, and Dave and I were actually just trying to um, get this uh, started this morning or right before this call. And I think we ran into some snafus. Uh, we're not exactly sure if that is a result of something with the relayer, which has done unpool proposals before, or if the way that we were doing the uh, proposal execution um, had some problems. So uh, basically, I think there were some problems with Dave's wallet in submitting a proposal and submitting the check Oracle transactions. So they were like, pen he submitted one and had a, um, uh, that one confirmed. And then he tried to submit another one and it set pending for like seven or eight minutes. And they tried to submit another one and that set pending for about seven or eight minutes. Um, and then I, my wallet tried to send and check the do an update oracle and that transaction went through um but then the next execute order transaction um did not go through um so uh we can kind of give a, a full debrief potentially maybe after i was going to write some of these things down just because of um, how it went um we we're going to submit another unpool proposal um after this just to see if it was something with the kind of update oracle or what um, just another thing to note was that the proposal passed i think it was on like sunday or monday and was executed then um but then was not actually uh, the order was not like a quarter or oracle and order was not placed until today so there was a little bit of time there um but yeah that's just a little brief update on that and, and john and Kerr, we can follow up uh, after that but happy to shout any more here dave i don't know if there's anything else yeah it was, it was funny because um Thank you. And Oscar and I were actually just on a call talking about the relayer, and we were looking, taking a look at this. It must have been just before you guys tried executing because I don't think it had been uh, executed. But yeah, it can be very sensitive on the Oracle execution functions. It's a and it's a bit tricky, so it would be good to go over it. But it's not necessarily surprising if there was issues executing it that like it got kind of uh, whatever like mothballed or got, uh, yeah ended up not working um yeah th and this is something too that we would eventually hope to address with some of the stuff that federico is working on now um to make these things kind of more they're not really automated but like kind of farmed out as like professional jobs to people like setting them up but but yeah let's debrief later and and kind of set up the next one. And it would also be great when uh, we do the next one to include Oscar and Venky too, so they can see it in action as well. Yeah. I mean, we, yeah. So we, when you're talking about executing or submitting, because I guess that we can set up. Uh, on the execution right? part. Yeah. I just yeah, want to see them. Yeah. 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 See, yeah. Let, let Oscar kind of see it in action with the Oracle and yeah. how this works. If they want, we could even do that for buyback one in the next couple of days too, because we have those set up, um, but we will submit the unpool one. I think Dave said we'll get to it today. So then in five days, was that Monday? We could also execute it then. Yeah, yeah that'd be good. 
Uh, yeah, and I did just paste the the DX swap relayer in the chat. I wish that Block Scout would have a big sign at the top that says swap swapper relayer and one that said GP relayer, so we don't get them confused. Um, but yeah, so that's uh, the unpool order. Um, yeah, and then moving on to the discussion item. Um, I think I think he said he was going to be fifteen minutes late to the call. Yeah, I'm here now. Oh, you are here there. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Um, so, thank you. Do you want to chat a bit about the the swap fee discussion? Yeah. Sure. I mean, uh, we had uh, some uh, internal uh, discussions where we were trying to see if we could increase the swap fee. Um, so, yeah, we we took three pairs, uh, Swapper XTI, Swapper VET, and DXT VET in Gnosis Chain. And then the post was about increasing it to 1% uh, from the current 0.25%. Uh, I was also going to check if if we should do a 0.25 to 0.5 and then one percentage. But then I remember speaking to Sky or somebody else where he mentioned that CowSwap is not able to integrate us because of this uh, fee custom fee implementation that we have. So I tried to keep it to what Uniswap, uh, um, to the same fee levels as uh, what Uniswap has. And uh, uh, yeah, one of the reasons to increase the fee, increase the fee was uh, to add more uh, uh, liquidity to swapper pairs and also to the DXT pair. That was the that was the prime uh, goal. Cool, and yeah, I mean, I think. Adding liquidity, right? So just to, you know, if you have higher fees, that means LPs are earning more in every trade. And that means presumably is what protects you against impermanent loss. The downside, of course, being if you have fees that are higher, you're going to discourage traders from coming in and, and trading as much. Um, so you'll de decrease some of the maybe price discovery, but it'll be a way to attract additional liquidity. Um, I'm curious if we know for sure that CowSwap will be able to integrate Swapper easier at 1% than at 0.6%, because I suspect what is the challenge is the different fee amounts for a Uniswap V2 fork, that like CowSwap has a way of integrating into every Uniswap V2 fork and it has 0.3%. And that that's what's difficult, that if it's like Swapper. And I would imagine that that would probably still maintain the difficulty if we move to 1%. Um, and so I, I, I'm de I, I am in favor of increasing the, the fee, but I, I think something like the 0.6% would be better as a way of kind of like testing it out a little bit, um, especially for the DXD WEF pair just because like we do have these pools on different chains and like we already have kind of concerns on arbitrage between the same the same chains and like a one percent fee would make it a, a little bit different difficult of course it is important for us to have the the aggregators in there but like if we i think if we would know for sure that like that that would make it better um that way uh and maybe we can try different amounts too like the swapper thing in general but um yeah those are my my questions. Yeah, makes sense. I, I, I'm not too sure about uh, the challenges that CowSwap has. Yeah, the uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. yeah, yeah. The the it doesn't matter which fee you choose. The work that they have to do um, to implement different fees, no matter what they are, is the same work they had to do for Balancer, and they just haven't done it for the exchanges that look like. Uniswap, so they have to do that either way. So it doesn't matter oh, okay. if we make it 0.6 or or one percent. So if we make 0.6 is better, go as 0.6. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But they should be they should be working on this soon. Yeah. Cool. All right. So I will. The next step of this is to create a snapshot, uh, snapshot poll. 
is is it okay if I just include 0.6 there as one of the options? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's two different ways like to think about this is like kind of signaling to decision, right? The question is like, do you take a poll on what the amount, like the preferential fee should be and then decide on that and then vote on implementing that? Or do you put like a bunch of different options um, at, at once and kind of just take, you know, whichever one has the, the most? Um, I think it's important to gain consensus first on an increase or decrease, but, but presumably an increase in the fee and then maybe like something separate on like what that exact amount is. Um, but like, you know, I think that consensus on an increase in the fee could just be come from the community and people saying that they're in favor. And I, mean, I was just looking in the discord, um, people actually responded to the governance discussion about the, the swap fee agenda. And normally that does not attract the attention of the community. So I think there is some interest in this, um, but yeah, then we need to figure out exactly what that, that number would be. Cool. And I, I presume we've, tested changing the fee on Arbitrum 1, but I know that we have done it on Gnosis Chain. Um, but, yeah. Um, yeah, we tested it on Arbitrum 1, but it was, it, it was, it was when we launched on Arbitrum. Basically. So okay. it, it's, it is good to give it a test once more. And that's also one of the reasons why I didn't include DXT Weth on Arbitrum. So just to start off with, one pair and uh, see that it works. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cool. 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 And um, I think that was uh, it. There's a couple different discussion items out. Keith, Keenan's Ethan for thoughts and personal outlook, which of course can only be read in text form because Keenan is taking a bow of silence after Denver. Uh, and then there is another post from Zenki, Zenki on a swapper staking campaign that we've talked, chatted a little bit about. Some people might've missed it um, in the last week if we were at ETH Denver, kind of some plans for a single-sided um, uh, staking campaign here. Um, I think that's, uh, that's it. I don't know, Melanie, if there's anything on contributor X that you wanted to shout. Um, I think we're all planning to chat on Friday on the strategy call a lot more about Denver and kind of debrief once we've had some time to, to gather. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I didn't really have any updates too much. Obviously every, I was in Denver for the past week. So yeah, more to come in the strategy call on, on Friday. Awesome. And I already see there's a new key base chat for another ETH event. Um, <laughs> so it continues. Next opportunity to catch COVID. I think there's like a limit. It seems like you guys catch COVID on like day eight or nine. Like, because <laughs> like when I was there, no one was kind of getting sick. It was like the day after. Everyone just hits the limit. Wait, who actually got COVID? So I think Keenan is so Keenan is saying he has COVID, but he's not speaking, so we have to respond with him. He's got two exposure notifications. That's his stuff. So and he